Hey, good morning, John. How are you doing today? Hey, Aero. It's so great to talk to you. We're going to have fun with this conversation. Good, because I think we should th- start things off with, with the definition of what Generation Z really is. Okay. Well, you know, Gen Z is defined as anyone born between 1997 and 2012. And what is so cool about that is right now Gen Zers span the age range of 10 years old to 25, meaning elementary school to the first years in the workforce. So it becomes a perfect and really rare moment uh, in a generation to take the time to learn about who they actually are. Boy, you are spot on with that because my grandchildren are 19 and 17. They are right in the middle of Gen Z. And I'll tell you what, this book is so important because it helps us understand the mindset, the actions, the reactions, and how they're planning out their own personal future. 100%. And I have to give a shout out to you as a grandparent because Gen Zers love their grandparents. And so, you know, grandparents everywhere can drop the mic on that one. They just absolutely love you and you inspire them probably more than you realize. Dude, you, they, I mean, were you, were you in my house last week? You're right. They do love us. They come over for hugs. Yeah, and, and I'll tell you one thing that I'm having to deal with, and I wish a lot of grandparents would deal with this, is that they want things. They want items from our life to put in their life. And it's like relinquishing it now before we die. Yes, I'll tell you what, one of the things, one of the many things that is so misunderstood about this generation, because all we're left with are the daily headlines that are sensationalizing a lot of the bad things. And usually they're very off the mark. But this generation is so sentimental. And they do want those things that mean the most to them. And certainly when it comes to their grandparents or important moments in their lives, they very much are that sentimental generation that in many ways is like, uh, you know, you as a baby boomer, probably me as a Gen Xer, we, you know, we are also sentimental. So I love seeing that side of them and, you know, introducing that to the world. The book we're talking about is What Would Gen Z Do? This book is so important to the world of broadcasting because in our research, we are, we always had a book in the control room that told us who our listener is. And so a book like this is valuable to retail. It's valuable to business. They need to know who is coming through those doors. Yeah, and that's really what I set out to do. And really, I am only the messenger here. You know, I've spent the last five years both in the classroom with Gen Zers, but also traveling the country and sitting down with Gen Zers everywhere and really getting to know them, really listening to them, asking questions. And so this book is all about what they want the rest of the world to know about them. And so I'm just so humbled and honored that I get to be the messenger for them and to really help put that uh, into perspective. The extreme positive here is that mental illness is very valuable to their to their process of growing forward whereas my mother oh shh, shh, that's the problem child shh, don't talk about this one but that's not that what gen zers want they want to talk about it they want to get it out there in the open yeah absolutely and really that was my very first connecting point with gen z when i first met them in my classroom and i realized there was something just a little bit different in a good way about this group because I still thought we were in the land of the millennials. And one day (laughs) I referred to them as millennials and I, and I loved the millennials as well. So it wasn't in a bad way, but they were like, we're not millennials. And I'm like, Whoa, like who or what are you? And they said, we're Gen Z. And I thought, wow, I'm, you know, and that was literally the starting point that has led to this book because I thought I'm going to now take the time to figure out who these incredible people are, what this amazing universe forming in front of me really is. And what I first discovered was just by them saying aloud words like anxiety, depression, suicide, I need help. Just by speaking those words aloud that the rest of us when we were their age couldn't, it's the biggest leap forward the world has ever seen in mental health advocacy, but it's also the greatest gift they've already given to the world because they're inspiring the rest of us to be more open with our own mental health. And they have certainly, in these past five years, pulled me into mental health advocacy. This book has opened up my my heart into asking questions because my essential job, I work with every age group. And I, I was talking to a group of, of Gen Zers, and I said, what is the conversation at work? Are you talking about the Ukrainian war? And you know what? They go, no. What we're talking about is the World Cup. And I'm going, oh, my God, I'm so far off base. It's unbelievable. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, you know, my suggestion, number one, when it comes to Gen Zers, is if you want to know something, ask them. Yep. So you are spot on. And, I, and, you know, and I so appreciate the work that you are doing because, you know, with all of the horrific, sensational headlines that we get out there that really are putting this generation in a box, it's journalists, journalists like you who are really flipping that on its head and you're helping the world to better understand who these young people are. So thank you for that. And it really is by asking questions that we're going to learn. But here's the thing. You could have then followed up and said, well, what do you think of the war in Ukraine? And you could have then gone down that path and had an amazing conversation with them about that. That's what I don't think a lot of people understand. They, they tend to think they're glued to their iPhones and iPads and video games, and they're just rotting their brains and wasting their days. That could not be any further from the truth. Think about just any topic. You know, actually make it a game for yourself. Think of any topic you'll want and find a Gen Zer and sit down and ask them about that topic, and I guarantee you are in store for one of the best discussions you've ever had. Jim, I've been with scientists as well as astronauts, and they're depending on Generation Z to get people to Mars. And if it's not going to be that generation, it's going to be their children. And that's how important it is for them to be on those digital devices because they don't have fear. They, they love to explore. They love to find new things. Well, and that has been one of the other major things that I've learned, especially for from the Gen Z gamers. Yep. Uh, you know, I, I grew up with Atari and Pac-Man, and I'm not a gamer <laughs> myself. And in fact, I always tell Zers, I'm like, if you want to beat someone every time, ask me to play with you. You will win every single time. But what the Gen Z gamers have taught me is the amazing skill set that goes into playing video games. And not only the skill set that goes in, but the skill set that they're cultivating and learning in terms of strategic uh, thinking and communication skills and just the creativity of the visuals. And, you know, we talk a lot about social emotional learning. There's so much of that that's cultivated in, in gaming. And, you know, this is now to your earlier point, this is now backed up because the U.S. military, major corporations are actively seeking yeah. out Gen Z gamers to come work for them because they are seeing the benefits of the skills that are being cultivated there. You you talk about communications. You're absolutely right about that because they've come up with their own language. I, I you know I, I you know I went through that area of LOL and all that kind of stuff, but they've got a language of their own and, and it's and it's by way of art. Whereas when when I was growing up, you know, having a tattoo or skin art was was taboo. But the thing is, though, they're using it. And my granddaughter's proof of that. You should see her tattoo. It's a powerful message that she carries with her every single day yeah i love how they it's one more stigma they're smashing through and, and you're right when we were growing up if you got a tattoo you better make sure it's covered up yep. because you're never going to get a job with that tattoo and i love how gen zers are using their tattoos as one more way of sharing their stories. I had a young woman who was studying to be a nurse and in class she was very open about her previous suicide attempts. And one day after class she came out and held out her wrist to me and she said, do you see these lines? And I said, yes. And she said, this is where I tried to cut my wrist mm -hmm. and I've now tattooed those scars because those tattoos are now my story of survival that I can tell to inspire others and to help others. So spot on. I love what they're doing with tattoos. And again, if you're not a tattoo person uh, and you're wondering what these tattoos are on these people, go up and ask that's a gen here, what it. does that tattoo mean? And I'll tell you what, you're going to walk away smiling and or in tears with the sentiment you're going to hear expressed. And you might even be tempted to get your own. I'm real. Gen Zers are getting me really close <laughs> to getting my own. I haven't done it yet because I hear once you start, you can't stop. You can't. You can't. They're getting me close to it. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, you definitely can't. All right. So, what are you doing with the book afterwards? Because it can't be just a book. It can't be just a website. Are you going to podcast? Or are you going to turn this into a, something on Netflix? There's got to be something else inside that creative mind of yours, Jim. Well, you know, I am I am hoping to continue taking this book across the country. You know, I'm talking to places everywhere uh, across the country. So it's be, the starting point is just helping people to better understand who they are. Yeah. And I really do, do hope that it opens up more opportunities. And I look forward to continuing to travel the country, uh, talking with Jim's years, but also talking 
to the, the older adult, adults and helping them to better understand who these young people are and to really encourage that intergenerational communication. So this is just one more starting point after what has already been an amazing five-year journey, and we'll see where the future leads. Oh, I love where your heart is. you got, you got to keep in touch with me. you got to come back to this show anytime because the door is always going to be open for you. I will definitely do that. Thank you so much. And again, I appreciate everything you're doing. And I love that you're rocking it as a grandparent. And, you know, make sure you tell your grandkids I said hello. And they certainly have a number one fan in me. Oh, you be brilliant today. Okay, John? Yeah. Yeah. So have a great day.